everyone doing? Uh, we are walking upright, breathing, and most of us are keeping the drool to ourselves. How are you doing? Good, good. Uh, just kind of wanted to uh, touch base. I know we've, uh, you know, Curtis put out something this morning to reach out to uh, your congressional office and see what feedback and just didn't know if anyone's talked about that yet. Yeah, I haven't. I, I've certainly mentioned it and it looks like uh, you said Curtis's name. So here he is. That's oh, an incredible nice. power you have, JT. Weird. Uh, but we did talk about the initiative, but I haven't had anyone report back uh, so far about what their experience has been in those phone calls this morning. So Okay. Well, I would suggest that the community, when, when they get off the space here, reach out to their reps and ask them why FINRA is changing their story 18 months later now. It's what is the change? <laughs> Weird. Can you um, let's just say, ask them, let's just have folks reach out and ask how they've all of a sudden come up with, uh, maybe there was an issue with the corporate action after all, and that's why they halted. Whoa. The, the corporate action that they wrote and they edited and imposed on the issuer, right? That corporate that's action it. or something else that's I'm it. not aware? Nope. That's it. Hmm. Hmm. Yep. Let's see yeah, if uh, so. Curtis can uh, give some insight. JT, hold on to your mic. Hey, All everyone, right. hold on to your hold on to your avatars. <laughs> so we may need a few more details on that one, JT. But Curtis, good morning. Welcome to the mic. Go ahead. Good morning. Mmm, love the smell of napalm in the morning. <laughs> Today is the day the gloves come off. So, um, let me tell you what we're dealing with. So. Uh, torpedo one hit the mark torpedo two hit the mark and maybe the best indicator of that other than just verbal confirmation of the hits on target are the reactions that I'm seeing everyone else is seeing I would love to hear more live feedback today but uh, we hit the mark so uh, the individual's names probably shook some uh, some cages. Uh, they are certainly circling the wagons right now to the point where, uh, interestingly enough, some information has been shared and I don't know if it's pushed on the congressional front, on FINRA front, on a broker dealer, institution, who who's pushing the misinformation, but I do know that it's not being qualified. And as JT just uh, stated, 18 months later, conveniently, the story starts to change. So I'm assuming that's why the wagons are circling, is to change the narrative, maybe, uh, you know, literally napalmed every FAQ. And never in any FAQ have they stated that the corporate action was process deficient. And if they did, and this is well documented, by many, many, many of us, again, point back to Rare DD, who has the most effective and thorough explanation of this. But um, if they process the corporate actions as deficient, then we would never have uncertainty in the settlement and clearance processes because those corrections would have to be made to process the corporate action and publish it in the first place on the daily list. But the narrative that's being spun now is that the, pro the corporate action was processed as deficient, uh, meaning the dates did not lay out and accommodate T plus two settlement. So let me, let me tell you why that's so important. We have them by the fucking balls. Literally, every single one of you. And let me, let me just, I'm one person, this is a community that I promise you, I've been holding back the pitchforks and torches on Congress's doorstep. I promise you, that's been the case this entire time. And I've been cordial about, hand, like there are people that have been right all along that have been calling out some of these offices for, for holding back. And we have been more than patient for 18 months, more than patient. So now, now my gloves are off and I'm gonna start taking swings at the people that are standing in our way. And I'm gonna call them out by name, by office, by staff, every single one of them. 
And that's just my part. Wait to the people that have the relationships established in person. Just wait. The media onslaught that comes out when the 10 representatives, the 10 people directly responsible for the U3 halt, the organizations that they represent, the FINRA members that you already know their names, that are on video, that are on FOIA responses, mess around and find out. People are going to start rolling over on each other, and members of Congress are going to be drug out into the light for covering up and participating in this collusion. So again, you are on the clock. Either you're doing the right thing and circling the wagons and determining what slot to put a hearing on the calendar, or you're going to be drug into the light. Everybody's done with the BS lip service. We're done. Changing the story isn't going to work when you've put out multiple pieces of documentation, including from Robert Colby, chief legal officer. Good luck, FINRA. Good luck. You published those communications. Good luck. Good luck, Fidelity. Good luck. Good luck to the other seven member firms and their counterparties. Good luck. We have the individual's names. That's why you're acting how you're acting. I love it. And guess what? You don't even have the entirety of the information yet. I can't wait. Everybody should be in this community right now. If you don't have a fire lit up under your ass to put in the phone calls right now and ask for what the status is on MMTLP. And if they're not responsive, if they sidestep, if they give you an excuse, perfect. Report that back. I don't care which space host you've reported back to. I don't care what, what avenue, but report it back. Tweet it publicly. Do whatever. Because what they're trying to do is change the story 18 months later because they are absolutely penned. We have them. They are penned. We have them. Uh, we've, we've never had, had this, uh, this much evidence and it is obvious what is happening behind the scenes. So anyway, uh, I'm fired up, if you can't tell. Um, I, 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 really, uh, I really hope that the circling of the wagons is them figuring out how to get their story straight and how to accommodate us because you know, all along, my personal feelings on this has, has been the same as many others in the community. And that is, I don't think I, I honestly, I just don't think Congress ever truly wanted to put themselves in the middle of uh, facilitating resolution in this because it is a complex problem. And by the way, they deserved grace for the time period that, that we allotted them. But when they're facilitating and disseminating lies, people that have been brought <laughs> in from an education standpoint since day one, since you know, a particular representative since before the halt ever existed. A same representative that acknowledged receiving acknowledgement from a broker dealer represented on this list of 10 members that acknowledged that they were aware of an imbalance. That information didn't happen to leak until after these names come out. So that's gatekeeping 101. That's collusion. 101. So that awareness is going to be publicized. And my God, the media onslaught that will result from this coming to light. But you can avoid it all by just answering the phone, putting the hearing on the fucking calendar, and give us the justice that these, all these members, all the 65,000 families have been put through hell. So do your job or we will ensure that you are part of the collateral damage. And make no mistake, you will be part of the collateral damage. You cannot obfuscate to this point. You are screwed. I posted the video earlier, a couple hours ago, I think. I want everybody to take two minutes and I want you to listen to that video. 
I want you to pay attention to who's in that video. There are only two parties in the video. It's a minute and 44 seconds long. And listen to the last 30 seconds of the video. And know that this was December 2023. We're talking six months ago. Okay? And then, then I want you to, to gather that information in your head and think about what that's in reference to. And think about what we've been done where we're being strung out to run out the clock, to literally run out the clock before something can be done, before the election cycle really takes, takes on you know, legs of its own and focus shifts. We're not doing that. The evidence that we have, we're not doing that. If I have to publicize it and we deleverage it, then I'll publicize it and we deleverage it, but I will ensure and every single person that I work with will ensure that it is brought to light and there will be significant collateral damage congressionally, significant. And that goes without saying that FINRA is literally littered all over this. I said the FOIA response for good reason. If you can't read between the lines there, the party, one of the parties is in FOIA response. Another party's in a video that has gone viral regarding this entire process. And oh, by the way, the coincidence of now we're gonna pretend that they're processing the corporate action as deficient when they drafted the language, they drafted the language and never, there's no record of any corporate action being processed deficient and they drafted the language. Oh, this is so rich. Uh, they're, they're lying on top of lying on top of lying. So anyway, the ask, Please don't sit in here and talk and react to why Curtis is freaking uh, fired up. Don't, don't do that and sit here and talk about it for hours today. Get off spaces, put in a call to your representative and relay that back on a space. It doesn't have to be savvy space. It could be a space this afternoon. It could be a space tonight. It doesn't matter. Relay the information. Knowledge is empowerment here. I know that this is going to be clipped and sent, and they're going to be aware that things are about to be made extremely uncomfortable for every single office. And good, good. We should not be sitting on our hands. I'm not going to sit on my hands. They know this data. I knew it was going to accelerate this week. They're not going to BS and lie and change the narrative. I think there's been a plan in place. They're either going to put a hearing on the calendar, issue subpoenas, or we're going to air it out this week. Whoop, there it is. <laughs> Honestly, what do you what do you say? What do you say? Uh, but I do have a question just for clarity purposes. Uh, Curtis, when we do call our representatives and they say, what are you talking about? What are you hearing in regards to FINRA flipping the script? Do we have, is this word from our sources at congressional offices? Has there been something published that we can look at? It's what? literally a letter on congressional letterhead by one of the two members that are most prominently featured with MMTLP since day one. And oh, by the way, Hint, hint, it might happen to be the representative that's in the video that I was talking about. And oh, by the way, hint, hint, it might be one of the two signatures on the latest uh, request for Gary Gensler to kick the can down the road again on investigative privilege. And oh, by the way, it might have been, hint, hint, the very first person to be involved in this congressionally. Oh, by the way, hint, hint, it might be the person with a Texas broker dealer that was aware of an imbalance before we were. The collusion that has existed is clearly evident and irrefutable. And the lies that are being purported now at the 11th hour when the pressure's turned up, oh, that's rich. Please, please stand in our way. Please, please. I promise you, you will be collateral damage. This will go to every media source. This, this is not a single point of failure. I'm... I'm not a single point of failure. There is an army of people empowered with this data now. 
and everyone knows exactly what's happening. Do the right thing before it's too late. Every congressional office has a chance to be a hero here. They all have a chance. No one's, no one's going to, at the end of the day, remember the 18 months of bullshit that we've all been put through. If you get a hearing and we get a resolution, no one's going to care. But if you don't do anything and you have to be held accountable, this is not an FTX situation. You're not burying the congressional ties here. You're not burying the political donations. You're not doing that. This community isn't going away. This is not an FTX crypto based community. This is 65,000 people that have been robbed by captured regulatory authorities. And unfortunately, unfortunately, we have been railroaded congressionally over and over and over again. And we have been literally maintaining professional decorum the entire time to establish this re these relationships, to educate, to give them ample opportunity, and to go through this political theater process that we've all endured. But when you take a stance publicly of I'm in support and I want answers for the community, and then your actions, your actions and literally responses on your letterhead from your office with your signature reflect that you are acting as an aide to purport new lies to try to change the narrative 18 months in? No. No, 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 no. Sorry. I call bullshit. So here's the deal. You can either do the right thing, commit to a date, and put a hearing on the calendar, one that I will love to be personally in attendance to, or, or we can start airing out name by name, background, history, decisions, documentation, and then what you were aware of, what you communicated to your staff, to constituents. And boy, is that gonna be a headline. Wow, that's gonna be a headline. Probably wouldn't wanna be associated with political financial corruption of that magnitude. Definitely would not, especially with really great media journalists like Dennis Neal, Kristen Shaughnessy, that would be more than happy to air this out. Now, Tim Pool. Johnny Tobacco. <laughs> do we have to do this? We've asked nicely. Now shit's getting turned up. You're in a ring of fire. You either give us what we need, what we want, and act as an aid to your constituents that have suffered for 18 months, or you become part of the collateral damage. It's your choice. I, I want to add something to that. For the last two months, I've heard from numerous offices, oh, you know, the election cycle, the election cycle, you know, we're, we're trying to figure out this and that want to be crystal clear here you're damn right it's an election cycle and you better believe if you're up for re-election right now and you have your hands in this and you don't do the right thing every bit of information every bit of receipts every email i have from the last 18 months will be going to every person that you are political you are uh up uh, up against enough is enough that's the best part about this. We have receipts. Every single email. Okay, guys. Uh, any chance that this letter is going to be made public? Yeah, probably. Probably today. <laughs> okay. So get off your ass. You know what office I'm talking about. I'm sure there's a staffer listening in. Get off your ass, answer the phone, and do the right thing. There's a storm coming. There's a storm coming. So, you know, Greg McCabe called this community relentless. And we've been 
subtly dropping hints that you do not want this relentless army turned on you. And there have been certainly politicians uh, that, you know, we've talked about the rubber hits the road moment and is it just lip service? And now it seems there may be active collusion going on. So uh, there, what is it? (laughs) FAFO? So I don't know, guys. Let's, uh, so Curtis, go over again. What is the ask? Take a breath here. Everyone simply, I'm not asking you to reach out to reps that you don't have relationships or contact with. Those of you that have established, and we have so many, right? We've done such an effective job. That's that's part of the disappointment of why we're in this position is because we've done such an effective job at establishing these relationships congressionally. So those of you that feel that you have a strong connection and you have good rapport with your congressional uh, offices, your representatives, uh, whoever that may be, doesn't matter, could be congressional representative, senator, doesn't matter, right? Doesn't matter who the staffer is, reach out and ask for an update regarding MMTLP. If upon, I don't wanna spell this out, I don't wanna give them the playbook, but facilitate the conversation with no different than the ask that we've had. But if you are stonewalled in that conversation, right, your perception based upon your experiences with the staff that you've built relationships with, if if you uh, feel that something is awry in that, or if you are, as many of us have received, not getting return responses suddenly, for the first time, you're being given excuses like, oh, what, what, we got meetings, we're in, we're in meetings, uh, 36 hours straight of meetings. Uh, there is no coincidence in any of this. But regardless, if you have a really positive conversation, right? I would love to be wrong. I would love to be wrong. And they're looking at and figuring out which committee is the most appropriate to facilitate this hearing. Uh, But what I think is happening and what all the evidence points to and literally a written congressional letter response back to a constituent is they're changing the story at the 11th hour. FINRA is obviously changing the story at the 11th hour. We're aware of that and the lies are irrefutable and we're not standing for it. So just just to be perfectly clear, we're going to air all of this out, including the individuals, the member names that are responsible for manipulating MMTLP, the liabilities that each of their organizations hold, why they have incentive and motive for halting, who was aware, what congressional offices were aware, What information was shared with congressional offices that they didn't choose to disseminate to the community that would have been helpful? What if there was another trade station that was found out months and months and months and months ago? And the the congressman was aware of that, but chose not to share that information with the community. Chose not to take action, knowing that there are multiple broker dealers that are acknowledging an imbalance. What if that was the case? How would that make you feel? Think about how hard we had to work as a community to prove and have enough pressure applied to have Trade Station raise their hand and come forward. And make no mistake, I stand by my theory behind that, that I think, uh, and you can read into this however much you want on parties involved, But I firmly believe, and this will come out in the data as well, this week, you all can hold me accountable to it. I will release the data this week. If we don't get the action that we deserve, it's not that we want, we deserve. We shouldn't have been put in this position to begin with. If we don't get the action that we are deserving of, if we don't get transparency, accountability, if we're not getting significant, tangible steps towards a resolution, 
I'm not saying we have to have a resolution by Friday. I'm saying if you don't show that you're taking tangible action this week, I'll release it all. I don't answer to anybody. Anybody. <laughs> I don't answer to Greg McCabe. I don't answer uh, to FINRA. I certainly don't answer to any broker dealers. I don't answer to anybody in this community. The, the data that's there, that put together, we're airing it out. So you have the power to shut my mouth. I will shut up. I won't talk about the names. I won't do anything. If you put forth the tangible steps to getting us towards a resolution and make no mistake, you have the power of doing that. Use your political influence for good instead of trying to fuck over your constituents that have been robbed, that there are some that are dead now, unfortunately, through all this and people's lives ruined through all this. It's a travesty. So do the right thing. There doesn't have to be any additional political fallout from my ambiguity that I'm dropping out there. Or, or I can release irrefutable evidence going to the very sources that you're trying to use to cover up the misdeeds. I'll publish the procedure, the individuals, the firms that they represent, and you will deal with the fallout. And then we'll see how many whistleblowers come forward as they try to roll over on each other, including congressionally. Don't make this harder than it has to be. Put a hearing on the calendar. Appease the people that are deserving of truth, of transparency. It's that easy. So again, Savvy, the, the ask for the community, get off this space for five minutes. Get off this space and pick up the phone and call your reps, even if it's the first time, if you have no relationship, overwhelm them with calls. They know what's coming. I promise you they know what's coming. <laughs> I promise you. The, the, the tone did not just shift. They know what's coming. So pick up the phone, transcribe your interaction, take notes, and then report back as quickly as possible. Maybe we change that tone. Maybe we don't. I bet the tone changes once the data is released. I'll tell you that. So again, everyone do the right thing. Just do the right thing. That's all we're asking. Do your job. Do the right thing. There's not a single investor here that chose to be put in this situation. We've asked, begged, pleaded for help. Do the right thing. You can be a hero. It's not too late. All this 18 month, it, it, it's all water under the bridge if you can help get us towards a resolution. And if you don't, and I'm thinking of a few particular offices uh, specifically, if you don't, the political fallout is gonna be permanently damaging, permanently. People will know your name. But the concern that I have is we're asking for a hearing, but we're asking uh, 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 of a hearing from people that seemingly, if, if, if Curtis is correct, uh, have been sandbagging us uh, all this time. And that, that, that is my concern. I share. Um, can, can I answer I share, that? Yeah. Can I answer that, Sam? Yeah. Go ahead. Let me address this. So we, we have the answers and Congress will have them. And it's about getting the people who are in the wrong on the record with an answer. Because at the end of the day, they'll know that Congress has, has the answers, has the truth. And they're going to have to come up sworn under oath. And they're, you know, they're either going to tell the truth or they're not. But what, what we have is... <laughs> information that I would I would tell them to tread very lightly and I hope someone comes forward very soon.
And they already have that's all I'm they saying. already have people rolling over on them. They that's already happening. That so it whether it be political opponents or people that have been uh un- unfortunately strung along in this process, they, they are rolling over on you. So if you are if you are in a position of power and authority and you were waiting to the to the point where the scales tipped to where uh, inaction was no longer going to be favorable. If you don't realize that right now is that crux, if you don't realize that it's right now and that the fallout that's about to ensue is going to be permanently damaging and you will not be able to come back from. I don't I don't know what to tell you. This is a this is a scandal that the media can eat up. You made it too damn easy now. You took an extremely convoluted, complex scenario, and now your involvement and your attempts at obfuscating and covering up and changing the narrative, now that's the story. You could have let the crime be the crime. Those that committed the crime be held accountable for it, but instead you involved yourself. So... Again, there's still a time and opportunity right now. And I share, by the way, I share the same concerns. You think that I have faith that the very members facilitating an active hearing are going to act in our best interest and not try to steer in a public hearing a narrative? That No, that that is absolutely what they're going to attempt to do, uh, which is why this is not a single pronged approach. We're not just addressing this congressionally. Oh, by the way, that's why I have a fire under my ass and I can speak with free will. Is because if you think that our only efforts were congressional in nature, then you are completely emphatically wrong. The judicial front will rain hellfire on you. You are now implicated. Do the right thing. Well, hey, Curtis. Doing, okay, but is now the time? Yes, ahead. it is. Cur- Curtis, <laughs> Curtis, is that is that why we've been pushing the AG's office uh, push as well? Subtext is a powerful thing. <laughs> let me let me ask you this, uh, Curtis. Right. Uh, I really, again, I, I I I appreciate it, and I'll tell you this: I'm pissed off more than you can believe because here I am. I'm, a, 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 you know, behind the eight ball on this investment. I put a lot of money into it. I've donated to Pete Sessions, uh, you know, to uh, uh, just because I thought he was a, 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 an upstanding guy. I, please prove me that that I'm right, Mr. Sessions. Go ahead, Cece. Okay. Um, yeah. So, you know, we're going a little, little haywire in the Texas group right now. Um, Texas was mentioned multiple times in Curtis's um, discussion. So I just need to make sure personally that I understand exactly what's happening. Um, so as far as FINRA is concerned, the narrative has changed based on this letter um, that is being kept under wraps for now. But so FINRA is saying that they processed a deficient corporate action. Are they blaming Meta? Is that what they're doing? Yes, yeah, in short. Okay, in short, okay. They're blaming, yes, they're, they're blaming the company um, for not accommodating T plus two uh, settlement, which we, we uh, this has been documented throughout the entirety of the process. And by the way, is, is, um, <laughs> You're not going to be debating with people on social media like me. You're going to be debating with attorneys that have the communication back and forth with the parent issuer and FINRA. So say whatever you want from a narrative standpoint, counterparties, but you're you're going to be arguing with communications that you forced to be written in nature. So have at it. Okay, so they so they're blaming Meta, even though they are the ones Finra who changed the corporate action. I just want to make sure I have that clear, um, so well, we know what we're talking about with our reps. Not to, 
and not just change the corporate action. Under Rule 6490, FINRA has an obligation and responsibility to review those corporate actions. So in essence, Curtis, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, is FINRA's new narrative that this is Meta's fault, but we didn't do our fucking job either. Sorry, guys. Uh, we didn't do our job either. Are they admitting that they did not follow again their own rules in reviewing and then releasing a deficient corporate action? Yeah, and and you know where it gets more rich. And again, I you know that window of time where I say this week it seems to be closing because I feel like I want to do I want to stop what I'm doing and I want to do it now. Like the people that are responsible for reviewing those corporate actions for settlement or clearance issues happen to be, you know, the rule 6490, they happen to be the same exact people that are also responsible for another decision. Do not make this come out. You do not want it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Just do the right thing. And Curtis, from what it sounds like, you're saying that potentially uh, a couple of those people uh, represent organizations that are out of bounds here. Every single one of them. <laughs> Every single one of them does. And there's, you know what? You know what's real rich is having a corrupt self-regulatory organization that still, as corrupt as they are, has to publish their procedures. I love it. I love it. They've been archived too. Go ahead and try to revise it. I love it. Please do that. Please go change the rules. Do the same thing you did with the corporate action processing. Please go do it. It shows intent. Intent to defraud. Intent to deceive. You will lose your immunity status. You are caught. Clearly. The same two individuals at FINRA we have on video, on SEC transcript, on in, FOIAs. in the fucking FOIAs, you're screwed. You cannot claim ignorance. If I were one of those two individuals, and I promise you, I promise you they know who they are, I would be rolling over on my bosses right now. All those names that were redacted from those FOIAs. Drag them into the light as well. Drag them into the light as well. And guys, imagine all the FOIAs. I just, the image flashing through my mind is all the FOIA requests that were denied and denied and denied and denied. Um, but yeah, I just want to reiterate the point. So, so Fenra, of course, saying in the beginning for 18 months have been saying, oh, we did this to protect investors. Now, when they have been called out and brought into the light and sufficient evidence provided, it sounds like to me, Curtis, they're admitting to uh, the lesser of, of uh, the greater evils here um, that, oh, no, the, the corporate action was deficient. We just didn't do our job and processed it anyway, which, of course, is the lesser of the evil that we colluded with uh, the criminal enterprise to defraud investors. And uh, we're acting always in that behalf of our members and not uh, retail investors. And in fact, uh, now it appears that uh, congressional, potential congressional representatives had evidence that proved us the entire time and uh, colluded with them to suppress that evidence. Am I off base on that? I wish you were. I wish you were, but. I mean, guys, I'm being hit with this news as well as you are. And so I'm just trying to to hear and listen and process and, and trying to get to those bullet points that we can then translate into uh, media outreach. By the way, reached out to Kristen Shaughnessy, Dennis, uh, Dennis uh, Neal. Uh, both have responded back. Uh, I've also reached out to Pulte. Uh, we will reach out. Curtis, you, of course, have connections to RFK's team. Um, I, you know, we've I, got work to do, guys. I'm, I'm telling you, I will go to every single connection that has been established in 18 months. And I will tell the story to perfection with the names, the names, the dates. I can do it without any prep work. We, you've put us here for 18 months practicing, doing this over and over and over again. And every single 
accusation that I will make will be corroborated with a, a link, with a document, with communication, some of which came from your office with your signature. Don't make us do this. I don't want to do this. We tried to be cordial. We tried the we tried what should be the appropriate route. We tried to go to the regulators. We tried every avenue. We exhausted. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not. I don't get fired up like this for nothing. This is bullshit what is happening to all of us. Some of the people that have been more or less ostracized from the community that called this out while they witnessed it firsthand in some of these offices, I feel terrible about. And even though there was merit to what they said in the moment, I said, it's not the time. It's not the time. It's not the time. And I was wrong. <laughs> I was wrong. I was completely wrong because I thought that we could make it uncomfortable and present evidence in a compelling enough way that they wouldn't be able to, to stand by and do nothing. But unfortunately, what has happened, to just put it concisely, is the evidence has been packaged up with a nice pretty bow. It has been presented a thousand different ways. And there's always new evidence that has been uncovered. And obviously that has all come to a head in the last week with the most important missing piece of evidence involved in the names and the organizations involved in that. But I was wrong. We were wrong to hold back because unfortunately, after all this time, and despite the lip service, despite the open letters, despite, despite all of what appears to be steps towards tangible action, what seems to clearly be occurring behind the scenes is an attempt to run out the clock to do just enough to appease us, but not enough to actually create accountability. And that's what we all want. I don't want to talk about this for another fucking day. We want accountability. We want what we're owed. We want the share account. We want it turned over to the company. And we want to be made whole. And if we're not, we will go to every media source that will listen and those that won't, and we will also drag them into the light. This criminal enterprise will be exposed. You can try to suppress it. You can try to intimidate. You can try to threaten. Try to discredit it. Just try. You will lose. Just do the right thing. Curtis, are, do you get the sense that this is one particular individual that we've talked about? No. Or do you get, so no. there are more involved uh, than just this person? No. I mean, we've beat around this the bush office. enough. Do, do, I have to, do I have to say uh, Patrick McHenry has been standing in our way since day one? Do I have to say that? Yeah. I mean, everybody. We've no, said no, 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 no. But I'm talking ways. about. The, the new information that has come to light, the revelation, this letter that you're talking about, of course, this as well as the information about a potential broker that uh, was over that they knew about a long time ago or in trouble, you know, all of this coming to light in the last week and a half since, you know, the, the list of 10 coming out. Do you get the sense that this has been a uh, coordinated effort? We know Patrick McHenry. We know that situation, but with, you know, unfortunately, representative sessions, are there more that we should be aware of or are our phone calls to our representatives an effort to flush out any other participants in this uh, endeavor? It's a great question. Uh, I have a sense. I'm not going to give it. Um, I would rather it be, uh, y you know, based upon broad experiences across the community, which is why I do think it's so important to just everybody take a pause, take a time out and step off the space, take the time to put in the call and we can share information. It doesn't all have to be simultaneous. Just drop, share your, your experience on the call like Deborah did. That was fantastic. That was, I, that's fantastic. Get a commitment on a response. If you don't, if you're not even getting an answer, 
if you're even making reference to MMTLP and they're sidestepping you, that's that that in and of itself is is a pretty good indicator. But everything that I've seen, this is before obviously coming out and having a fire under my ass on on publicly, uh, is in the last 36 hours, there has been a, a complete change. And it appears that this evidence is causing action and them to figure out a contingency plan. And that contingency plan appears to have been, I don't know if it is still, but appears to have been to change the story, to change it after 18 months. So uh, again, I, I can't emphasize enough the importance of everybody putting in the phone calls, the pressure that each office should feel to respond and support this should be at an all-time high. Today, not this week, not last week, today. I Curtis, just jumped off you... the call. Sorry, I just want to jump in real quick and tell Curtis. I just stopped the call right now for my, or stopped listening and called two offices right now. Looked at the video and said, let me call these offices. <laughs> First one I called. <laughs> The only reason I'm on this space is because they absolutely have somebody listening. The dude was shook legitimately. I said, I have a very specific item I need to talk about. It's super concerning. And it seems like there is a real deadline that's going to be approaching here real soon. And the dude literally said, frame him TLP. Hold on. That's what he told me. Hold on. I waited, got back on. He already had my info and everything else and said, I promise you, sir, we'll absolutely get back to you today. I said, okay, making sure hung up, call the next office. But the voice on that call sounded different than it normally does. So something might be happening there. Absolutely. But the tone in the voice sounded like someone who was having a bad, a bad morning, but they weren't being mean. They, they tried to sound extremely accommodating. So Sometimes, like Curtis said, a simple phone call and listening to the context, the voice, and the response is very, very telling. So, like I said, everyone else, get on the phone, do the same thing. Please, that is that is fantastic feedback. Please, I can't implore everyone enough to do the same thing. Yes, I just want to jump in here real quick because I have to get off. Um, we know for a fact, staffers, again, this call, right, that, you know, that last speaker right there pointed it out. So, if there are staffers on the on this right now listening go to your bosses and let them know that we're done fucking playing and the deadline is fucking real i'm i'm hanging up right now and i'm going to call my office before i step into this meeting in 20 minutes and i'm they in my office as many of you know has every bit of information from day one up until last night and i'm letting them know that Friday is for real. The end of the week is for real. And everything is coming out with names, dates, emails, every bit of information. And like Curtis said, I don't owe anyone anything at this point. My account says zero. I'll send it all and I have no problem walking away. So everyone have a good day. Make your, make your calls. And uh, like Curtis said, report back. Get that uh, thread builder uh, fired up and warmed up, guys. I feel one coming on. So uh, let's go to uh, Cece. Go ahead, Cece. Um, hi, again, so just a, a quick question. Are we, you know, some of us have, have forged relationships, and there's a lot of folks in the Texas group who have visited with that particular congressman um, and uh, keep in contact with his office. Are we calling them as well? Or are we just focusing on our own reps? Oh yeah, give them a call. We've we okay. put in some calls. If you get through, uh, they got some some messages to respond to. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I just I want to make sure that you know we of course are, everyone's trying, myself included, to absorb all the information. My my head is spinning a little bit here, so I just want to make sure everyone is clear. 
um, Curtis, about in a bullet point perspective, what they should be saying and mentioning to their rep. I know people, I'm sure I'm not seeing it because I'm not taking the time, but I'm sure there are posts that are flying. Uh, you know, it's certainly, we don't want to, I don't know, is there an overreaction here, Curtis? I just want to make sure that we are keeping things as factual and as pointed um, as possible. So let me go to a few more hands. You want to, you know, maybe jot down the bullet points for let, us. And deliver. Oh, go ahead. Let, 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 let me just put this to rest. I'm sorry for all the cursing and the emphasis in my voice. Uh, again, I hope my calm, normally reserved demeanor over 18 months speaks for itself and how fired up I am. There is no overreaction here. There okay. is clear collusion that has taken place. And I think they thought arrogantly that they could do so without being held accountable. And the people that they communicate closest with, that they are emboldened to put their name on congressional letterhead and sign it with blatant lies. Offices that are more educated on the events surrounding MMTLP and Next Bridge Hydrocarbons thereafter. They don't, they are clearly, clearly circling the wagons, trying to steer this in a different direction and quite frankly, come up with their own revisionist history of facts. And I have no doubt that they're attempting to bury evidence, to manipulate and fabricate additional evidence. It's happening in a concerted effort. So before they have an opportunity to do any more bullshit, I'm going to air it all out. I'm going to make it really, really, really uncomfortable. And that includes congressionally, includes all the contacts. You reference our outreach. You did. You reference our 40,000 letters. You reference the families that have suffered through all of this. Not me, not anybody else. You did. You put that. Do the right thing. It's so easy. It's so easy to do the right thing. Help the whole, not a few. We rely on your assistance or we wouldn't be coming this avenue, this route. Just do the right thing. Uh, but Curtis, do you want to reiterate uh, the information in summary, the ask, and then uh, put a bow on the space today? Sure. So, uh, thank you. Um, look, this has been a process, one that not any one of us as retail investors asked to be a part in. We simply made investment decisions based on actual information, actual due diligence. And unfortunately, what We've all experienced, whether you've been here for 18 months, whether you've been here for six years, whether you've been here for a decade as part of this roller coaster, uh, it, it's, it's insanity. And it's fine. Um, we've gotten to this point. We've had to, unfortunately, come together as a community to attempt to escalate to the regulatory bodies that are supposed to protect us, uh, that claim to protect us, that claim to halt the trading of MMTLP to protect us. Uh, and the more that comes to light, the more evidence of the collusion that has existed surrounding this manipulation of this ticker, going all the way back to Torchlight Energy Resources, the evidence of awareness of the fraud that has existed and the manipulation surrounding the stock goes all the way back to Torchlight Energy Resources. And unfortunately, whether it be the SEC, whether it be FINRA, whether it be the broker dealers, whether it be congressional efforts, media efforts, we have been met with closed doors and obstacles at every front. And what's come to light, particularly in the last week, are the names and individuals of who facilitated and very important pieces of that manipulation. Upon even the allusion to the 10 names, we've had congressional offices that have changed communication styles with 
community members that have established very strong relationships. They appear to be shelling up. They appear to be circling the wagons. And it's for, uh, it's for good reason, in my opinion. It's because they're trying to get their story straight and trying to figure out what to do and how to handle us. It's been my belief this entire time that Congress has never truly wanted to participate in any sort of resolution or any steps towards a tangible resolution for MMTLP shareholders and, and now what should be next bridge hydrocarbon shareholders. That's my belief. Uh, that belief is backed up by behavior, uh, by lip service, by lack of execution. Uh, I've personally been patient and this community has been more than patient through 18 months of having our funds frozen, stolen, liquidity taken off of the table. We've been suggested to be forced and the company forced down routes that allow those that have been committing fraud off of the hook. That's not fair. What we're asking for is simply transparency and accountability. I don't care how that comes about personally. I'm sure most investors uh, agree with that sentiment that at the end of the day, the piece that we're asking for is the share count. Empowered with the share count, the company has the necessary variables of equation to facilitate a resolution and ultimately some form of settlement, some form of reconciliation. There are different opinions within this community on what is the best means of resolution, but everyone is uniform in the opinion that we are owed answers and transparency. I would love nothing more than to not have to talk about anything that happened relative to MMTLP for another day in my life. But that can't happen and I will not stop talking and I will not stop airing out the conflicts of interest that exist until we have a resolution. And there are an army of investors, of extremely intelligent, articulate investors with tenacity never seen before that share that same sentiment. So the ask is simple because I know this is going to make the rounds of many of the offices that I'm alluding to. Come bring the necessary parties to the table. I don't want to be even verbally hostile. Bring the necessary parties to the table. All we're asking for is the share count. We know there has been acknowledgement publicly by one broker dealer who is now in active litigation that there is a share imbalance. It is obvious that the other even more prominent and large broker dealers share the same imbalance. The evidence that has been uncovered validates that. The conflicts of interest from these member firms that are involved in the most critical decision regarding MMTLP validate that. The conflicts of interest that appear to exist on the congressional front with changing stories, changing narratives, coming at FINRA's defense, coming at the SEC's defense, and not coming to the defense of your constituents who have been harmed and lives have been lost. And those that have not been lost have been ruined. And those that have not been ruined have been affected deeply by this for 18 months. So now is the time, and I cannot implore you enough, to do the right thing. And that right thing is bringing the parties to the table that we have been asking for all along. What we will not stand for is a hearing where you pretend to placate us frame it up in another repeat House Financial Services Committee of the GameStop fiasco where you turn the table and blame retail investors for a scenario that they are not accountable or responsible for. Financial institutions within the U.S. are responsible for this scenario. I understand the power and influence they have. It is intimidating as a one-person Standing in this fight it is intimidating standing up against those giants. But every single one of us have chosen to take a stand 
to no longer put up with what we have had to endure for the last 18 months. So do the right thing. You hold power that we have provided to you as our elected officials, as our representatives. So do the right thing. Mandate the parties to the table. We're not to say what the best path forward is, whether it's subpoenas, whether it's a hearing. We've relied on guidance from your expertise, relied that you had our best faith. That's not reflected in the communications that have come to light in the last 24 hours. With some of the most prominent educated members brought in from day one in the relative matters of MMTLP and next bridge hydrocarbons. But there's still time and there's still chance. I'm not here <laughs> to cause a ripple and neither is anyone that, uh, we're, we're all here and unfortunately political activists out of necessity, not, not out of want. I would love nothing more than to not talk about this again. So please enable that by bringing the necessary parties to the table so we can facilitate a reconciliation and get people their lives back so we can move on. That's the ask. And for the community, thank you for everyone standing strong and being here every single day over the last 18 plus months, since December 9th, 2022, where we've all been here every single day, having to put in work and stop the other things that we would love to be doing in our lives. Thank you for being here. Please continue to be cordial, be kind, give grace, but demand answers from your congressional representatives. They are accountable to you as their constituent. Thank you. And for the record, not just Curtis has the evidence, multiple people do, it will be released. So just for the record, not only Curtis, but multiple people have the evidence. Curtis, can you confirm somebody was asking that this, uh, the, I, I know that you're, you already confirmed the, the information regarding the 10 entities uh, that may or may not have the conflict of interest uh, was forwarded to Next for Charger Carbons. Uh, the new information that we're talking about today, has that also been forwarded to Next for I don't know. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll make sure that that happens. So. Okay. Thanks for that. Anything else you want to share with us, Curtis? No, was... Um... Is there any additional feedback on any uh, communication on the congressional front from any uh, uh, any additional callers? Yeah, no, people have been calling, getting a lot of messages like, we'll get back to you, we'll get back to you, we'll get back to you. Uh, I'm checking my DMs to see if there is any updates other than the I get back to you's, but no, I'm not seeing a whole lot of that right now. Okay, well, while everyone's been on standby because we're, you know, uh, a typical now last open letter response from Gary Gensler and the SEC was six days late. Um, that was an ambitious uh, deadline, six days late to uh, to hold this response to, even though it'll be probably one or two paragraphs at most. But I'm being told that we shouldn't anticipate a response for an additional two weeks. But the SEC has acknowledged that they are working on a response. Okay. So again, again, I don't know as an elected official <laughs> holding one of the most powerful positions in the United States as our elected representatives, I don't know how you could possibly stand for a regulatory agency like the SEC thumbing their nose at you, totally disrespecting requested deadlines, continuing to obfuscate and use investigative privilege as an excuse of not providing answers. It, it appears that you are using that excuse to show lip service and placate the community just long enough to where we lose relative interest. It's not going to happen. I'm going to be working around the clock to put this information together 
where it goes, whether it's publicly put out in the Twitterverse or whether it's put out in congressional offices that are willing to be allies to this retail investment community, that's dictated by the actions in the next 24 hours. So if there's not tangible movement, something meaningful that shows that we have the support, then the conflicts of interest, including congressionally, are going to be aired out.